Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For this month's Bird Notes program, we're going to talk about what raptors and other birds we might see during migration. And joining us from the Audubon Center in Huntington is bird expert and conservation biologist Mark Labar. Mark, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Welcome. Always great to be here, Fran. So, uh, so tell me about migrating raptors and what we need to know. Yeah, so, you know, in, in past shows, we've talked about uh, many of the small songbirds that migrate. And of course, um, they migrate mostly at night and we see them flitting around in the bushes and stuff like that, feeding during the day. But um, with raptors and some other birds, uh, you know, they're doing their migration during the day for the most part and feeding on the way and taking advantage of uh, the winds and the thermals, which allow them to, to move south. Hmm, fantastic. Um, so what, what, who, who might we be looking for? Because not all, all the raptors migrate, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, we have, raptors are an interesting one because during the winter months, we're likely to see many of these raptors, uh, some that stay behind. Uh, this is a bird that doesn't, and I included this one because of its name. This is a night hawk, and it's, it's actually not a hawk, but I thought I would just throw it in there. It has those nice white wing bars there, and this is a what they call a goat sucker. So it's in there with whippoorwills and chuck wills widows, and, and they make a migration, and they do it right at dusk. Um, they're endangered here in the state, and we don't have any breeders, but more than 7,000 of them this year passed down through the Connecticut River hmm. Valley. Uh, there's a number of uh, faithful bird watchers that are out there um, that keep an eye and count all of those. And then as far as, you know, birds that we might also see that are easily identified and, and move during the day is the turkey vulture. Mm -hmm. um, and this, you know, it's a big bird and, and really its characteristic flight has that V-shaped um, wing pattern there. Oftentimes they can be really high up and you won't see that red head, but they have that, um, that V-shape which kind of shows them off. I had one float by the Audubon Center here a couple of days ago and, uh, you know, they're out searching for carrion and stuff like that, but they're a bird that... Um, will move south at this point in time too, or many of them may have already passed through. Right, I love the, the verb float. That's really what they do. They can, they circle around and they, they float out there and they're huge, but. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they're big and they, they have those fingers out there yeah. as well. So, you know, a pretty common species. Another species that um, during the fall, uh, September and October, that we'll see in large numbers as they move um, south through the Champlain Valley and Connecticut River Valley is the broad-winged hawk. Now this is a bird that we don't see too often. It's a forest-oriented bird. Hmm. So during the summer we might not see them, but those broad white tail stripes really let us know that that's what this is. And broad-winged hawks do something called kettling. And that's where they'll actually fly in large numbers hmm. and they they will, um, they'll use the thermals that are created by the heating of uh, the earth and that causes hot air to rise. And these birds will drift in numbers, um, oftentimes large numbers that can be seen from places like uh, Mount Philo uh, as they move south. They drift up and then they slowly fly back down. They catch another thermal and that's how they move south. Wow, so might they be kind of circling as they catch a, yeah. a thermal? Yeah. And then they, they head further south and then they'll try to yeah. catch another and one, they'll, they'll circle around. And it's quite spectacular um, if you get large number of these as they, you know, especially across the Champlain Valley, if you get a good place to, um, yeah, you know, to look see at them. Yeah, to see them, wow. And Mount Philo is a great hawk watching place. Um, there in Charlotte. Right, and there are a lot of different hawks there. So I saw that really, that bold stripe. What, I mean, every time I see a hawk, I just always think it's a, you know, a, a red-tailed or, you know, maybe red-shouldered. So what am I looking for? What's like the one thing to really look for to identify these hawks? 
So those that broad wing is if you can get a look at that white stripe on the tail, that's really um, significant. They're beautios, uh, red tails and uh, broad wings and red shoulders, meaning they have big wide wings and short tails. Um, you know, a red tailed hawk, uh, oftentimes it's, it's pretty much a really common hawk that we see because it often hunts out in the open. And you can, you can tell the difference because if you can get a glimpse of that red tail, <clears throat> you can, um, you know, it, it kind of um, tells you what it is right off. And they sure. often have that broad belly striping that you, you see there right. in this shot. Now, are they migrating as well or do they stick around? So, yeah, a lot of them are moving, and um, we don't see too many broad-winged hawks in the winter time, but we will see red-tailed hawks. They're often picked up on the Christmas bird counts. Huh. So there are species that will stick around during the winter, uh, but a lot of them also move south. Okay, and your, your next bird is not so easily confused with hawks. Yeah, so this is the bald eagle. Yeah. And, uh, you know... Uh, right now, it's being considered for uh, delisting by the state of Vermont. It was considered endangered, and it um, will hopefully remo be removed from that list because uh, their numbers have grown so well here, and they've had lots of chicks that have been hatched. But this is a bird, and this happened at, at the Audubon just yesterday. Um, looking up, there was a single bird, and that white head, and that was those white tail feathers really um, let you know pretty quickly that it, it was a bald eagle. Yeah, they're so... And it's all... They're big. Ahead. They're really big. And I usually see them around Lake Champlain, but the Audubon is pretty far inland. Do you see them often there? We don't see them that much. So this was a bird that was probably moving. Mm. And yeah, so, you know, bald eagles are one of those birds that will stick around. Uh, we see them during uh, the winter time. There's Audubon and the state of Vermont Fish and Wildlife actually hold an annual bald eagle count. Hmm. So they're attracted to open water where they can, um, you know, get the food they need. And oftentimes folks that are fishing, um, ice fishing, will live piles of um, stuff alongside of their holes and the, the eagles will take advantage of that. Fantastic. And, and what about the osprey? which is the other so the main bird you see, you see around the lake. Yeah, so the osprey is another one, and this is another uh, real successful uh, bird story. It's no longer on the endangered species list. It was taken off quite a while ago, and they're just cropping up all over the place. But you can tell the osprey, you know, the kinks in the wings right there. Instead hmm. of holding their wings straight out, um, osprey off, often will have that little kink with the end, uh, the primaries uh, kind of going back there. So that's a good way if you're looking up um, and you see a bird in the distance and you see that pattern, uh, that's a good way to know that it's an osprey. Okay, and what are some other distinctive characteristics of, of some other raptors that you might see? Yeah, so some of the other raptors that are out there are some of the smaller ones, the occipiters. Uh, these are our woodland hawks and raptors, and they differ quite a bit in that um, they have a really long tail, which helps mm -hmm. them move around in the woods. And this is a sharp-shinned hawk. It's, it's not much bigger than maybe a crow, probably smaller than a crow, between a crow and a jay. Mm -hmm. But you see how the tail feather... Um, is straight across there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it ends uh, really sharply with a straight line. That's one way to tell this bird from uh, a, a bird that looks very similar to it, another occipiter called the Cooper's Hawk. And the Cooper's Hawk um, is another woodland hawk. Uh, but you can see here, as you look at this bird, the tail is kind of rounded. Huh. And I always think that that rounded tail looks like a C, and so C for a Cooper's Hawk, and oh, that's, and that's a way that you can tell those apart. But from the Buteos, you can really separate them by that long tail compared to the size of their wings. Right, and they're they're actually much bigger, I guess, than the sharp shinned. Yeah, usually. so they're you know they both of these Coopers and Sharpies. Um, are pretty small and oftentimes they'll stick around in the winter too if you've got a bird feeder set up and all hmm. of a sudden your bird feed you know your birds disappear 
it could be that you have one of these birds lurking close by. Uh, you can't see them necessarily, but the birds know that they're there. And, and what about wing shape? What does that tell us? So wing shape, um, as you can see with those beautios, big, fat, wide. But when we get to our falcons, uh, they have that distinct uh, pointy wing shape. Uh, this is a peregrine falcon, and uh, you can see how it differs from those previous pictures where, you know, the Budios had big, wide wings, oftentimes with uh, the little fingertips, uh, but the falcons have this really sleek design where uh, that wing uh, points backwards like that. And so, and, go and ahead, you have, a, you have a kestrel as, as well, so this is the peregrine. That's the peregrine, and the kestrel is, um, you know, one of our smaller falcons, uh, the merlin being the, the smallest, but mm -hmm. you can see the kestrel here has that shape, same pointy wing shape. So if you're looking up at, at migrating raptors uh, and you can see that wing shape or look at the tail, the length of the tail, it can give you some clues as to what you're seeing, even at a great distance. So we're just about out of time, but the Harrier is also, that's, that's also not a falcon, but the, that might be confused by, with some of these other well, birds. It, yeah, it's not, but it, it, it is a bird that has some distinctive features. Um, and the one that often shows up is that white tail rump. Got it. Um, well, I just wanna make sure that people can, can ask their questions for next time. Um, so if you uh, have a question, you can pass it along to Mark at the address on your screen, or you can drop him an email. His address is mlabar at audubon.org. So thank you so much, Mark, for talking to us about raptors. Um, most of them go south, but some of them might be staying with us, so keep your eye on the skies. Yeah, keep your eye on the skies. You never know what's going to fly over. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. Take care. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.